This is what my minimalistic computer setup looks like. It's designed to make mindless scrolling virtually impossible and to make social media work for you and not against you. I've tried blocking social media apps out completely 100% and it definitely works, but the thing is, I was still getting a lot of value from using social media, like watching YouTube videos and looking up stuff and learning from other people. So I wanted to set out and find a solution where I could just block the algorithmic feed. And this is what I came up with. So how I have it set up is that I have all these social media websites blocked except for the hours of six to seven every single day. So I only get one hour of social media usage. Setting a schedule seems restrictive, but it's actually really freeing because throughout the entire day and your entire morning, you're not gonna be thinking about what's on the feed or refreshing to see if there's anything new. So I have another block set up where it will lock me out of my computer at 10.30 p.m at night and that pretty much just forces me to go to bed. This is super useful if you wanna have a healthy sleep schedule and to make sure you're going to bed at the same time every day. There's also a few more tiny optimizations and blocks, but those are the two main ones. I'm gonna show you the two apps I used to set up the blocks and also two other apps that have really boosted my productivity and helped me not procrastinate. If you haven't already, make sure to watch part one, which is how I optimize my phone to be a dumb phone. It's really the two systems together that make it work really well. So there are three apps I want to share to show how I set up all the blocks. And the setup is a little bit different than my phone because I actually do do work on my computer, so I can't just block YouTube entirely or the browser entirely. It's a partial block, but let me show you what I mean. So the first app that I use to set up the block is called Cold Turkey. So how I have it set up is I have a block called Algorithmic Feeds on YouTube. I have it blocked the homepage, but not actually searching on videos or watching videos. And that way I'm actually using YouTube more like a search engine. And for Twitter, I have it block the homepage, but not the page where I can write out tweets. And I have a similar thing for all these different pages and it works super well. The only time where this block unlocks is between the hours of six to seven. This is really useful because like I used to have a bad habit where I would wake up and check the YouTube homepage and oftentimes just get sucked into this really interesting podcast or video. So like for example on Twitter the homepage is blocked but I can still go to this page which I've bookmarked and I can still write out tweets and post tweets without seeing the homepage. And the same for YouTube. I can search up stuff on YouTube and it loads the results. I can watch the video, so if I'm searching for something, I can still watch it, but I can't access the homepage, which is where the platforms are really addicting. An extension I also use is called Rabbit Hole, and you can hide the sidebar, which works really well because then you don't see the suggested videos on the side. And you can also hide other stuff, like you can hide the comments, you could hide subscriptions, etc. So rather than blocking an entire website, you can think about which specific page you get distracted by and then just block that one for a certain part of the day. I did use this extension before called Newsfeed Eradicator, which just removes the algorithmic feeds, but in my experience, it actually doesn't work that well because you can easily bypass it with one or two clicks. But with cold turkey, you can actually make it so it's impossible for you to bypass it, which is why it's so effective. I'll link a document in the description of all the websites I've whitelisted and blacklisted. So if you wanna just have the same setup, you can just import that and it should be the same. So with this application, once you set up a block, you can decide how strict you want the block to be. So you could just have it uh, with no restriction where you can turn it on and off at any time. You could have it with a timer. So how I've done it is that I just lock it up for until the end of the year. So I'll, I'll lock it up for an entire year because there's really not an, an emergency situation where you need to access the homepage. And if you really do have that emergency situation, you can just uh, go to the library or something. The app also has this feature built in where you could temporarily pause a block through this button right here, pause for a cause. And you basically just donate $5 and you can have access for 10 minutes. So another option is you could just block it out entirely for the entire day. And whenever you do want to use social media, then you pay $5 to charity and then you can use it for 10 minutes. But now let me show you the blocks that I have set up. So the first one is the the one we've just been talking about, the algorithmic feed, and that's just scheduled to be a block for the entire day except for the hours of six to seven. The second one is called silence, and I've basically just blocked every messaging app and application, so you can block applications too. And this one, I don't actually use a schedule. I just have this so that whenever I don't wanna be distracted and I wanna do some deep work, I just turn this on, and it'll just automatically close all the tabs where I have messaging apps open, and I won't get those notifications. And the third block is called unproductive and I basically just have this as a continuous block so this is being blocked like 24 hours a day and I just have it for websites that I pretty much never want to visit so like uh, corn 
and like garbage news sites or games, like stuff like that. So yeah, you can set that up as well. And there's also one more block here called frozen turkey. And it basically just allows you to set up a schedule where you can get locked out of your computer at a certain time. So like for me, before I found that once it got past 10 p.m., I would often get on these YouTube binges and then sometimes like stay up super late at night just watching YouTube videos. So this was super helpful in just like forcing me to go to bed. Yeah, I would recommend setting this up if you have trouble going to bed early or sleeping at the same time every day. All right, so with cold turkey, it's super effective for setting up these scheduled blocks, but sometimes you might just wanna do one one-off session that blocks every single website where you can't even watch YouTube videos. And even though you can do that in cold turkey, I actually prefer using a different app. That's called Freedom. Yeah, this one has a easier to use UI, I think for one-off blocks. You can block all every single website. You can block specific groups of website that you set. So I have like these specific groups that I have. I use it for just like whenever I want to have like quick deep work session. So I can block out like four hours and none of the websites work that distract me. There's also this feature here where you can play some ambient noise from a cafe. This is what it sounds like. Yeah, it really gets you in that mood of doing work. With Freedom, you can also sync across different computers or laptops. So you have different workspaces, then this might be a better option. You definitely don't need to use both, but I just like to use both just because this is easier for doing a one-off session. With literally two clicks, I can create a four-hour block. So those are the two apps that I use for setting blocks on my computer. But the third app that I wanna show is called Micromanager. This is also created by the same developer that created Cold Turkey. So how this one works is that you select the apps that you wanna work in. So like, for example, like I only wanna work in Notion. Then you select the amount of time that you wanna work in it. So like two hours or like 10 hours or something. But once you click start, uh, you won't be able to open any other applications, which is a pretty interesting way to block it too. But I used to use this for an application called Anki, which is a flashcard review application. And I'll just make it so that I literally cannot open any other apps until I'm done with all the flashcards that I need to review for the day. This is really useful for intense focus sessions. A bonus app that I've been using lately that's been helping me focus and also just not get distracted with things like social media, it's called focus mate it's basically a website where you can hop on calls with people like you just select any time you want and you can hop on a call with someone and you can just work with the camera on for like one hour sessions it works surprisingly well because you have to be really intentional about what you're using that hour for so in the beginning you just tell each other like what you're going to work on and at the end you check in to see how much progress that you've made. I found out about this from this entrepreneur, Alex Lieberman, who actually sold his company, Morning Brew, for $75 million. And he said this is the only app that he found to reduce his procrastination by 90%. So if it helped him, it could probably help you too. Definitely helped me out. Try it out if you want. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Like with cold turkey, you can just automate the blocks. You don't really have to think about it at all. You just know that every day at six or whatever time you said, you can use social media. And the idea of these apps is really just to minimize distractions as much as possible and to give you back more time to do the things that you actually want to do. I think the reason why this one works so well for me is because it's a very simple system that is completely automated. And the more I've tried out really complex systems, like really complex uh, time management systems or to-do list apps, the less I'm likely to follow through in using it. A lot of productivity advice talk about the importance of goal setting and journaling about why you're addicted to social media, but, but the thing I found to work the best is just to leave it out of my control. Like I literally, it's not possible for me to get addicted to social media. I don't need to do any sort of uh, journaling exercise or anything like that. So yeah, if you're like me and you wanna try this out, I highly recommend this. I'll see you in the next video, peace.